double up. Three or four times, I ain't telling no lies. Let's run it up. Never let a hard time humble us. Hey guys, welcome back to another Ever Everglory devlog. Last time I said I was gonna try to improve the performance of my game a little bit, try to boost that FPS. And in this devlog, I'm gonna talk about everything I did, all the things that worked, all the things that didn't work, and ultimately what the final result was. So stay tuned. So the first thing I had to do was profile the engine to basically understand where it was spending its time and why the frame time was as long as it was. So here I can see just from doing this uh, basic profiling that the render, th the main thread is typically waiting um, 20 or so milliseconds for the rendering thread to complete its work. And from this I can tell that the application is limited, um, the FPS of the application is limited by the rendering. So here, for this frame, if the rendering took 20 milliseconds less, the whole frame time would take 20, sec 20 milliseconds less. And this can be confirmed by a very basic experiment, just by moving my viewport to another area where the rendering is a lot simpler. I can see the FPS just shoot up where um, when I know that the processing is exactly the same as before and even in that example still I'm still bounded by the rendering speed because even when I'm at six even when I'm at around 70 FPS then I'm still I'm still waiting 10 milliseconds for the rendering work to complete so just from doing this basic experiment I know that I have to focus all my energy on the rendering performance. And uh, the thing is that doing basic uh, profiling, as in taking the timestamps of how long the different functions take in the rendering thread, it doesn't give a very good picture at all. Um, so here we see that drawing the water takes 1.5 milliseconds, um, doing a batch of drawing takes 0.4 milliseconds, and this doesn't really make any sense. And the reason um, why this is, is because the graphics card actually does its work asynchronously. So um, calling a function like glDrawArrays, all that really does is submit some work to the graphics card and um, and return and in the background the graphics card will be um, doing that work so this wasn't really giving me a very good picture so what I had to add was um, basically add profiling of how long the actual um, rendering work took for the graphics card to complete and there's a way to do that in OpenGL using GL query counter and the matching GL get query object. So what that does is basically insert like a packet into the command stream that's being sent to the graphics card that will cause uh, a timestamp to be logged and then at some later time when the work is completed and I know that getting the timestamp won't, won't cause me to block, I can get the timestamp and see how long it took the graphics card to do its work. And here we see, yeah, this makes a lot more sense. Drawing the water takes um, 7.5 milliseconds. This draw call, a little over seven milliseconds. This batch draw call, around 3.8 milliseconds. So if we add um, all these up together, roughly we're getting the kind of frame latency. And yeah, another effect that we see here is that sometimes, like we see here, this GL begin frame takes like 25 milliseconds. And at first glance, this doesn't make sense. All that this begin frame call does is clear the buffer. Meanwhile, this batch draw 
which does um, a lot of the rendering, is taking only 0.5 milliseconds. And the reason for that is um, this begin frame call is actually getting blocked. So before we can clear the buffer, we have to wait for the graphics card to finish rendering the previous frame and submit this frame to the monitor. That's why um, this call takes as long as it does. It's not that any work is actually being done here, it's that we're waiting for the previous frame's work to complete and getting blocked on this OpenGL call. And that's one of the major insights with OpenGL is that you have to be very careful um, when the graphics card is rendering the data for the previous frame or even potentially from two frames ago, um, we have to make sure not to um, touch that data or make any call that's going to get blocked waiting on the graphics card to complete its work because that means that we spend extra time waiting and we introduce extra delay before we submit new draw commands to the graphics card and this overall degrades the performance. So now that I have the profiling infrastructure in place, this is the first benchmark that I'm going to be working with. So about, um, let's say 29 milliseconds on average. And this is with recording on, but I'll be doing recording for every benchmark I take in the video. So for now, let's say 29 milliseconds, average frame latency. Let's see if we can do any better than that. So next, I worked on a system of reducing state changes in my OpenGL program. So before, I had logic like this. For every uniform value that's replicated between a few different shader programs, I would have, I would basically, you know, loop over all the shader programs, install the shader program, you know, send the uniform value to the shader program, then go on to the next shader program, install it, send the uniform value. And this basically caused me to have a lot of context switches between the different shader programs. And each one has a cost. And here in the old logic, I basically had three plus three plus three, and then another three, 12 um, context switches between the shader programs. So I switched this to a new system where anytime I wanted to set uh, some kind of state, which was used by a number of different shader programs, I would just put it into a table. And this has a number of different advantages. First of all is that um, the table would keep track of uh, if the value I'm setting is the same as the old one. If it's the same, then there's no need to um, update the shader programs. So this basically kind of um, allowed me to eliminate all the redundant um, state changes, of which there were quite a few. And the second advantage is that, so instead of just using GLU's program, I now went through this API, which would um, fetch all the relevant um, values from the table, and if they were dirty, it would install them. So ultimately, the end result is the same. All of these shader programs use all of these uniforms. But in this case on the right, there's only three context switches between the shader programs. And so this just allowed me to decrease the number of redundant state changes while not really having to change the API in a fundamental way. Like for example, everywhere where I used, you know, GL uniform, roughly speaking, I could just remove this with a GL set state call and all the kind of uh, caching logic would be inside of this call. So it was a pretty simple change in the code. Like I changed, there's a lot of different places where I was doing this and it was fairly like simple to just change it to use the new API, which just, 
um, decreased the number of state changes. So after adding this system, I got some pretty good gains. Now we see that the average frame latency is now um, about 21 milliseconds, even hovering between 20 and 21. So it, it's basically an almost 30% improvement over the base case. And it shows that um, the common wisdom of trying to reduce the state changes in an OpenGL program um, it does in fact hold true. So here we're not changing anything at all about how we're rendering or what we're rendering. We're just changing how we're using the API and removing the redundant state changes. And this yields some pretty good gains. Next, what I tried to do is first of all, enable proper MIP mapping and um, well the MIP mapping has other advantages it just makes um, everything look kind of a little bit better by um, using smaller textures where appropriate and this kind of re re um, gets rid of some uh, aliasing artifacts that you start to see when uh, you zoom out too much on a high resolution texture and I also put it I also put the textures for every model into um, a single texture array. But honestly, these two things, they didn't really advance the performance too much from what I had before. So that's that. Just how I cry. So the next thing I worked on was a system for batched rendering and as we can see here in the picture, the way it basically worked is um, I take a few different meshes, a few, a few different models, each having their own textures, each having their own meshes, and I try to combine them as much as possible into um, one single buffer and the textures into one single ar texture array. And I guess on the one extreme, I, have, I would have one buffer and one texture array for every single model and on the other extreme I would have just one global um, mesh buffer and one huge texture array. Um, I guess the problem with this second extreme is it's too it's kind of hard to pick the perfect size that would be big enough for everything and if the size is too big you're wasting um, just way too much memory for most batches. So in order to strike a kind of balance and reduce the, the fragmentation of the buffers, um, I made a system where basically I would have you know some fixed size buffer, some fixed size texture array, and as it fills up and overflows, I allocate like a second texture array and a second buffer. So basically in the worst case, um, I would do, I would be doing a draw call for each of these, um, separate buffers, which is worse, I guess, more overhead than one single draw call, but it's a more flexible system. And the way, as I already mentioned, it would work is like this green, um, is the textures of one model and the mesh of one model. This pink here is the textures of one model and the mesh of that one model and so forth. So here I managed to fit three meshes in one buffer and I would bind all these texture arrays. I can bind them all at once and then I would just do one draw call um, using GL multi draw arrays in direct to render all these meshes in one single draw call and using a command ring buffer based by a persistent map, map buffer and another ring buffer also backed by a persistent map buffer I would send all the per instance attributes like the model matrix, the materials for that model and anything else that's necessary to render it basically what, would, what was formerly the uniforms um, 
that were set before every draw call and each command in the com command ring buffer would describe basically one um, GL draw arrays or GL draw arrays instance call and my system would fill up this you know ring buffer with all the draw calls I would want to make right uh, instance attributes for all the instances I was rendering and then in one GL multi draw arrays in direct call I could basically render all the geometry at once and I spent a long time working on this system and let's see what the results were so spoiler alert it didn't actually work out as well as I had hoped and my frame latency went up to 27 milliseconds or so and we can see here that um, some things like this uh, time to submit all the draw calls it was reduced drastically like before all this um, RGL draw all the calls combined would basically take as much um, time or um, cumulatively would uh, take as much time as um, the rendering itself like this render thread would basically never be getting blocked in this uh, begin frame like I uh, demonstrated in the beginning of the video with this new system basically um, this time here went went down by a lot but the actual time on the on the GPU actually takes takes more time um, not like significantly so 27 that's basically you know still a little faster than what we started out with and I'm still pretty happy with the batching system it's pretty robust we're able to dynamically grow the batches in real time but it just didn't um, give the performance gains I was hoping for and I'm not sure 100% why I still need to think about it more look more in depth into it profile the code more do more research but uh, I think with this hardware that I have I'm basically um, becoming limited by the work that the graphics card can actually can do so I'm not limited by the draw call overhead like this render thread is actually taking um, a lot less time than um, the actual rendering itself on the GPU but uh, and I guess it's just a question of the driver whether this um, batch rendering is as efficient as making the draw calls separately it could also be about how I'm submitting the data it could be about um, like the fixed um, overhead associated with the batch rendering I'm not 100% sure at the moment but uh, it is what it is I think I'm still gonna make use of this batch batching system in the future like for things like the particle system and so forth and I'm gonna go back to it after some time one other thing I want to do is to try it out on a true discrete graphics card that's more powerful for now I'm just using um, Intel HD graphics which isn't that powerful and it's not like a discrete PCI device so it's a bit different in that way I want to see if it behaves um, any differently on another kind of card but this is what it is basically um, this final part that I spent a while working on the batching system didn't really give any performance gains but uh, so I guess there is you know a lesson to be learned in that as well basically you can't just uh, you know take a common wisdom things that you know people say in general are you know boosting performance and expect that for your app on your hardware it's gonna boost 
um, your performance. I mean, it could also be a question of implementation. Did I make some mistake in the batching system? But for the time being, it didn't yield any gains. Um, that just about wraps up this devlog. I hope you guys enjoyed this content. Um, going forward, I'm gonna focus a lot more um, on the features like ranged combat and other things. I think I'm gonna come back, try to do some more performance tuning in the distant future, in a few months or so. Um, for the time being, I've uh, disabled, I'm gonna disable the batching system and I'm gonna come back to it later. So see you guys later and subscribe. Backseat on propane. All black fire gold chains. Young rich nigga bossed up on his own, man. My new shit sound like a soul train. Took you with him over coat train. Eric B by the rope chain. RC with a show bang. Tiny Lokes and they go crazy.